Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Inks and I'm from RGS Electronics and today we're covering another drive and that drive is manufactured by Delta and it's their VFD-L module. Uh, it's been around for quite some time so I thought let's have a look at it, how it works and what it can do. So yes, as usual it's going to be a three part video. Uh, it's going to be first part commissioning and uh, local run. Second part is going to be a 2-3 uh, wire control. And third, we're going to look at the multi-frequency setup. And uh, hopefully it has got a uh, MOP control as well. So we can check that out also. So all related manuals and any other, any other thing that would benefit you in a possible way is going to be in the description below. So do check it out. So without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> Here we are, so uh, all wired in, so let's go through our wiring as a initial wiring as we always do. Power goes here on the top and actually has a three terminals where you can put in the power as it would be for the normal three phaser and they have not blocked off the one you're not supposed to use if it is a single phase drive, which is hmm interesting, it is quite confusing as well because in the manual it's very hard to, it doesn't really have the diagram for the single phase in there, it's just somewhere in the text it says what you need to use, which is quite hmm, interesting, I've never seen that done before. But anyway, the line goes in uh, R and uh, neutral goes in the S or L1 and L2 and obviously your earthing goes right here as well. So when it comes down to a actual uh, uh, terminals uh, in, in the front, oh yeah, and uh, you have a motor here, we, uh, UVW going out here and going through the contact and it goes off to, to, to the motor, so it's right here on the bottom. So from there on, the RA and RC is going to be your multifunction indicator, basically output contacts. So uh, that's that for those. And uh, right here somewhere in the bottom, right here, RS485, you got the RJ11 for this guy in here. So if you want to use the communications for the R, uh, R S485 communication there. So uh, from there on in, in the front in here, you will have a uh, 10 volts. So, so this guy, 10 volts, AV1. And obviously the grounding in here, that's gonna be for your potentiometer. And the potentiometer size is quite awkward, which says 3.3 kilo ohm, between three kilo ohm and five kilo ohm. Or the range, so I presume the closest uh, standard would be 4.7 kilo ohm, so 4.7 kilo ohm. It is. That's what we're going to be using today. So, uh, and from there on, you have a M0, M1, M2, M3, and uh, uh, basically, yeah, four uh, digital inputs. And that's pretty much there is. There's not much else uh, that uh, it is uh, when it comes down to actual IOs. And this guy in here is obviously if you're using a current for the control on your frequency is I, and volts is going to be for V. So that's when it comes down to terminals. Next up, let's look at the actual, uh, all the buttons, how they really work. So, uh, you got the potentiometer, as you can see, it is, uh, I've been already playing around. This is uh, called SPOT in, uh, in the manual, so you can control frequency with this guy, or you can use, use uh, up and down buttons in here. Uh, so that's pretty much up and down buttons in there, it's going to be mainly used for uh, navigating between the menus and also controlling frequency if you wish. Run stop, as it says, it runs and stops the drive with one button, so uh, that's for the local control. And from there on to enter the, the program, you just enter the, uh, for, as, as soon as you click the program or data, it will go into a menu. And you have, how many menus do we have in there? As you can see, it's the menu groups. So we got nine. And if you want to go into menu groups, so let's say you're going in there and then you opens up the, the next lot, what's in that uh, group. And then you get a the subgroup where all the parameters are in that subgroup. And if you want to enter it, you just go into with the data. And if you come out, if you want to come out of it, just click the mode, mode, and it will leave you. Uh, you pretty much will be leaving the menu. And that's pretty much all there is. And obviously the reset button. So obviously if you have any errors, will be used for a reset. And that's about it. So next up, let's have a look how to a factory reset this drive. And to factory reset, go to a uh, parameter group zero. And enter in there, go to parameter two, enter that one and go all the way to 10. And press enter and end will come up. And as you can see, my uh, drive has been fully reset to factory defaults. 
Next up, let's get this drive going. And by the way, by default, uh, everything is reset for this drive to 60 Hertz. So be aware of that if you are here in UK and working with this drive. So everything is reset to 60 Hertz. So uh, you're probably going to want to change that to 50. So uh, let's start with the first thing. Let's go to parameter group one, where we are going to be changing our... So the first parameter is there, as you can see, stands at 60. We're going to lower that to, oh, to 50. That is going to be our operating frequency. Wow, here we go. So save that one. So the next one we need to change as well, the maximum uh, setting frequency, which is the output frequency. So you need to make sure that for my motor is 50 Hertz. So I want to make sure that it doesn't go above 50 Hertz. So that will be for setting and making sure our frequencies are there. You only need to do that once and now that'll be fine. We're all in there. From there on, the another thing I'm going to be changing acceleration, the acceleration. So I'm going to jump to a, uh, which one is it? It's a nine. I'm just going to set mine to one. Come on. Wow, it's taking a long time to do this. Uh, so, so, and then the uh, next one is well, the acceleration. We're going to change that one as well to one. So it's better for a, a control that we're going to be working on. So we can see it quicker. So, uh, come on, let's go. Here we go. So one second, we'll leave with that one. So uh, from there on, I think I'm quite happy with everything else in the basic parameter group. So... Uh, yeah, so uh, after that, we need to go for a uh, group two where we're going to set our sources because we're going to be controlling it from uh, a, a uh, uh, from a front keypad. So we need to make sure that that is set in as a two uh, dash zero zero stands for a frequency source. So we're going to change that one because there's a couple of things because uh, we need to do. You can uh, control it. This here will be classed as a digital keypad. And this one in here is going to be classed as, as a VR variable resistor. So we're going to change that to 3 to be controlling for this guy in here. So let's save that one. And then after that, we're going to go into change as well. So uh, source command is going to be, uh, it's on zero already. So we're going to leave that in there by default is that. So and after that, the only thing we need to do is a set of motor parameters. And that's really, we need to set up is the overload in there and that's pretty much i believe is it so now being a group seven so yeah there's all for to get going the only thing you really need to do is, is, is set up your overloads and after that if you need something extra do read up in the manual it's quite nicely explained what is what but so uh so yeah let's leave that go into group seven and uh from there on as you can see that's a stance on 85 because this drive can calculate its overload uh, by a percentage so you take the motor current which is in my case is one and then you have the drive current which in my case is 2.7 or something like that and uh, then uh, one divided by 2.7 it gives you uh, gave me 30 uh, uh, 0.37 times it by 100 and gives you 37 percent so that's exactly what i'm going to do is the 37 percent for my motor oh the minimum is 30 so we'll show that in there so, and that's pretty much it for if you want uh, to get this drive going for a normal standard operation. So, uh, next up, let's check out how that works. And to do that, let's just leave. Oh, overshot. So, uh, press the run, as you can see, nothing happens. And there we go. Carrier frequency is really good. I can't complain. It runs really well. It's really smooth as well. It's a pretty good drive and very, very easy to work with. So, uh, so it does that weird weird sound when you go doot, 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 doot. it's like a little beeping sound i don't know what that is and that's pretty much it and if you want to control i don't know why would you want to control speed with these buttons you can but potentially is nice and that ladies and gentlemen and then you stop it in here and that will be your start and stop with local control and that ladies and gentlemen will do so uh, hopefully that is uh, giving you a good understanding how uh, to navigate and uh, work through and get yourself going with the uh, local control next video we're going to look at uh, two three wire control so definitely check it out and that i uh, don't forget to smash that like if you like the video and subscribe if you like what we're doing here and uh, yeah any comments in the line do leave in the comment section below and answer them as soon and as accurate as i can and thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next video